Thank you for joining me for this video. I am fortunate to be presenting you a very interesting topic. I am Mr. Ish. We are looking here at the Theorem of Pappas, an excellent integral calculus application. If you have a line of rotation or a line of axis here, we're looking at a vertical line of rotation and you do a rotation and you are looking at a certain region of space which is present on only one side of that line, not on both sides, and you do this rotation, you can do a certain volume determination based on area times distance. The area is obviously equal to the area of this shaded region. You see, as you would say an area between curves, the distance would be equal to, well, this region would have a certain center of mass or a centroid. That centroid undergoing a single rotation, well, that would be your distance. Volume here would be equal to the area of your shaded region times 2 pi, a certain value from your centroid. It would be either an x bar or it would be a y bar value and that would depend on the line of rotation or the axis of rotation. When you have a vertical line of rotation, you'd be using a x bar of your centroid. You know the centroid is made up of an x bar and a y bar, that's exactly what we're talking about. If you have a horizontal line of rotation, then there's a certain region of mass present on only one side of that line of rotation. In this particular instance, then you would be looking at the y bar value. So how does all of this make sense? We will use the sphere, the volume of the sphere as our model for this particular video. And everything starts with a centroid calculation. If you're looking at a unit circle you saw for y, you have y is equal to square root r square minus x square. You know it represents this area over here. Minus r to r up to r. There's a certain centroid or a center of mass for this region. When you're doing centroid calculations and you have an even function, do not use the even function property of integrals where you would be looking at a minus a to a or a certain integral, then you convert it to zero and a. That'll totally distort and destroy your center of mass calculation because you want to do a center of mass from the extremes of your limits not bring everything from zero to r and then you your center of mass would be here would be totally wrong don't use the even function property of integrals for center of mass calculations when an even function comes through anyhow we have to do the volume derivation here using sphere you know it's four or three pi or q but it will start with this the x bar value of your centroid is equal to one over a the reciprocal of the area you have the formula a to b x f of x dx the y bar value is always equal to this, the reciprocal of the a, a to b, f of x, whole square, divided by 2, dx. Everything here is still dx. Let's look at the x bar value. Intuitively, you know it's going to be a 0. But we're not going to do any shortcuts for the purposes of this video. We'll just calculate it. What's the area of this? You know it's a half of a circle. The area must be pi r square over 2. Let's look at the x bar calculation. It'll be the reciprocal of pi r square over 2, which is 2 over pi r square, you have minus r to r x. Again, don't bring in the even function property. x times square root r square minus x square dx. You can do u substitution. u is equal to r square minus x square d. u is equal to minus 2x dx. Do u1 and u2, but an interesting aspect comes about when you do everything with regards to the hair, r square minus this and that, you'll get zero and a zero. You have no change in limits, therefore the end result of this entire integral should be a zero, which is exactly what we were expecting. There is a no change in limit, u1, u2 end up being zero, and that's what we were expecting. Now the y bar value will be two or pi r square. You have this two, you can bring it out here. You'll have a minus r to r, this function r square minus x square dx. Why am I doing it this function? Because there's a square here. The square of this radical eliminates the root, the radical, and you're just left with that. You have a 1 over pi r square minus r to r, r square minus x square dx. Integrate this. You'll have r square x minus x cube over 3. Looking at it from r and minus r, 1 over pi r square. Integrate it. You have a r minus minus r, which is a 2r cube. 2r cube coming right here. Then you have an r cube minus minus r cube, which is a 2r cube over 3. Minus 2r cube over 3. Do a common denominator. You'll have a 6r cube minus 2r cube, which is a 4r cube over 3. That'll multiply with this 1 over pi r square. You can simplify the r square and that will cancel out. You'll have a 4r over 3 pi and that's your y value of your centroid, your y bar value. Now we have everything in place to do our volume determination using the theorem of Pappas. Remember very quickly, volume is equal to area times the distance traveled by that centroid in one rotation. 
we have here a horizontal line of rotation. How do I know whether I'm using the X bar or the Y bar value? Well, it depends. You look across your line of rotation and if you're drawing horizontally directed Riemann rectangles and you're using the Y bar value, why is it? Because you're looking upwards in the Y direction and I'm gonna use that. My area of this representation is a pi r squared over two. The Y value, two pi, and then the Y value will be this. 4r over 3 pi. When you consolidate all of this, this pi, this pi, that 2 cancel out, you'll have 4 over 3 pi r cube and your volume has been determined from this formula. And you know again it's area times either 2 pi y bar or x bar value. How do you know which one to use from here? If you're looking across in the x direction from your line of rotation, then you're using the x bar value. If you're looking across in the y direction of a line of rotation then you're using a y bar value that's exactly what it is and remember for the theorem of Pappus the region of space must be located only on one side of your line of rotation not be along both sides and that right there brings us to the end of the sphere application for the theorem of Pappus thank you have a good day bye